Hey Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. In this video today we're going to go over how you can track the enemy jungler. This is a topic that a lot of you guys have asked us to go over and there's no better time than in the preseason to go over this. Not only is this important for junglers to know, but it's also paramount for laners to know. Keeping track of the enemy jungler allows you to understand how you should be playing in the moment. For our question of the day though, which champions have you guys been finding success on in the preseason? Right now I'm having a lot of fun playing Garen and he feels super strong with the new Conqueror. It's a nice change honestly, I've always loved playing this guy and I'm glad that he didn't get gutted. Now I know the jungle can be confusing for a lot of you guys. No matter what role you play, it's important to understand the mechanics behind the jungle as it affects everybody. So make sure you check out ProGuides.com where we have a jungle course by Nightblue3 alongside so much other material that will help you improve. I want you guys to check it out because I know if you're watching this video you are serious about improving. Improving. And with that being said, let's get started. Before we even get into talking about jungle tracking, I have a pretty big suggestion for you guys. Personally, I believe that even if you're not a jungle main, you should be playing some jungle games if you really want to improve at League. Even if it's just normals with friends or on a smurf, playing the role and understanding this role is universally beneficial. Every lane needs to interact with a jungler at some point, so understanding how it plays out firsthand from that perspective will give you a better idea of what they might need from you. After playing a new role for a bit, it also makes it easier to understand not only how a jungler will want to play, but what it feels like to be in their shoes. Alright, so what is jungle tracking? Let's talk about it. The term itself is pretty self-explanatory. It's just keeping track of the enemy jungler and being able to infer their current position on the map. This, however, is one of the hardest tasks to accomplish in League of Legends, and you honestly don't even need to do this perfectly in order to win your games. However, you should still be able to apply it to some extent, otherwise you'll probably end up getting camped and find that you could have avoided many unnecessary deaths. Especially in higher elo and professional play, you will see jungle tracking as something that pretty much everybody is going to use. Just tracking the jungler alone doesn't do anything, but at the end of the day, the reason that you do it is to gather information. With that information, you can then change your decisions or form a new one. This is what allows great players to find success. It lets them play more consistently and make decisions that will help their team win their games. So how do you accomplish it? Well, there are a variety of ways, but essentially it comes down to gathering information and making educated guesses. One of the most important and simplest ways to get an idea of the enemy jungler's position is, of course, with warding. Placing early wards and consistently placing effective wards will make tracking the enemy jungler so much easier. Instead of playing an absolute guessing game, you'll need to see where the enemy jungler is at some point to successfully track them. No matter what role you play, getting deep wards is crucial because if you can place a deep ward in the enemy jungle, this not only helps you, but it indirectly aids your teammates. If your ward spots out the enemy jungler, it alerts you to back off, and simultaneously it tells your teammates that the enemy jungler isn't near them, so they can do whatever you want. Some easy wards are in spots that can spot out the raptor and wolf camps. Since these camps are closer to the center of the map, it's much more likely that junglers will farm them in between the ganks. The other part of jungle tracking is honestly a guessing game, but it's just like they taught us in school. There's a difference between randomly taking guesses and making an educated guess based off of information. We heavily suggest taking those educated ones, by the way. If you had previous vision of the enemy jungler, this will help you infer where they might go. Where they arrive from and where they walk towards really tells you a lot. If you see the enemy jungler farming raptors on a ward, and then they path towards the opposite side of their jungle, you'll likely know that they are either full clearing or looking for a gank on that side of the map, for example. Another factor to consider is their specific champions. Certain champions actually have specific routes that they would rather take over others. Efficiency and playing optimally is simply the highest percentage play, and at the same time it also makes somebody more predictable. It's kind of like if the enemy jungler is playing Karthus or Master Yi, you could already deduce that they will likely attempt to full clear their jungle or use some variant of that as their first clear. Something else to consider is how strong an enemy champion's ganks are. If they have laners that can set them up very easily, like a Malphite for example, there's going to be a higher chance that they will deviate from their jungle pathing and go for a gank. If you have a strong understanding of jungle routes and which champions use specific ones, it can only help you. So make sure to check out one of our other videos where we go over a lot of popular routes that are being used this season. 
The hardest part of tracking junglers is when you have zero vision. It's an inevitable part of the game though as you can't always spot them out with your wards. You'll always need to be taking into consideration what the enemy jungler's next move is, primarily when you're playing jungle yourself, but also if you are a laner. For example's sake, let's say that the enemy jungler cleared their three topside camps and then immediately ganked your top laner, picking up a kill. Meanwhile, you or your team's jungler started on the bottom side of the map. From there, you need to immediately turn your attention to the mid lane. If the enemy mid laner has priority, you should know that the best play for the enemy jungler is to try and invade your topside jungle since their solo laners have priority. This is a great use of inference through deduction. It wouldn't really make any sense for them to path to their bot side as it's too far away and would likely be gone by the time they got there anyway. You'll need to practice this thought process in pretty much every situation. Think about what the enemy jungler's next best move is and use that to inform you on what they might do. You can then adjust your play based off of this information and go to make the most optimal play. Now that we've talked a lot about tracking junglers, we really need to talk about how to apply this knowledge. When you see the enemy jungler on one of your wards, you know exactly where they are. If you see an enemy jungler sitting in a brush waiting for an opportunity to gank you, you should very well understand that you need to back off. Things, however, can get tricky when they're not standing on top of one of your wards. From the moment they step out of your field of vision, your idea of where they are becomes less and less precise each moment that passes. Jungle tracking feeds your decision making. You need to understand where the enemy jungler is, what they will do, and what you should do in response. Even if you know that the enemy jungler is sitting in the tribe brush, waiting around and looping around to gank you, you still need to take that final step and make a decision based on other information that you have. While in most cases you would back off and avoid getting ganked, remember that knowledge is power. Maybe in this case, the scenario is that you're about to hit level 6 and can 2v1 or 3v2 that gank. You'll want to keep an eye on the wave and try to bait your opponent into trading with you. From there, you'll simultaneously take that fight while also hitting the minions for level 6 and then unlocking your ultimate. Maybe you know that your jungler is sitting right behind you and you want to force your opponents to commit and turn the fight around. You'll play aggressively and bait your opponents into wasting their abilities, especially ones that provide mobility. Once it's too late to back out, your jungler can jump in and help you pick up some free kills. Maybe you know that you can survive and lose nothing for letting your opponent gank you. They will commit and you'll walk away with your life, unscathed. As a result, they've then wasted a lot of their time and you've allowed your own jungler to start to pull ahead. You will create pressure in a subtle way that can eventually heavily impact the game. And there's honestly a lot of what ifs, but one of our in-house analysts says that even if you don't have the game knowledge to act on any of these situations, there is one that you can take out of this video no matter what your skill level is. That is to simply play safe when you don't have a good read on where the enemy jungler is and your jungler isn't nearby. It sounds simple, but it's something that a lot of players, including high elo players, usually forget. The most common application of this is when your own jungler makes a play on the opposite side of the map. If your jungler just ganked bottom and found himself a double kill, you should be wondering as a top laner or a mid laner where the enemy jungler is. Why aren't they defending the bot lane turret? Are they ganking me? Can they gank me? These are all parts of the thought process that you really need to adopt here. Continuing to play aggressively when you don't know where the enemy jungler is really opens up a lot of opportunities for them to make their own plays in response to your team's plays. Another thing to consider is that you can only make decisions when you spot a jungler ganking your own lane. You also need to use any information you can gather when they're further away or even on the opposite side of the map. If the enemy jungler is clearing their jungle towards you, you can't just randomly take a trade. If you take a bad trade, it opens up the possibility for a dive, so the intelligent thing to do would be to instead stay very healthy and manage the wave in a way where you won't be susceptible to a gank. One of the most effective defensive tactics is prevention. Now, as a jungler, your role is a little bit more nuanced. Ultimately, with any play, you have the final call. Especially because you won't always be in a position to immediately match a play, you need to constantly take into consideration what your options are. For example, your bottom lane gets ganked, but you're on the top side of the map. And as much as you'd like to be there to help them 3v3, you physically can't because, well, you're not there. In this specific scenario, you have to consider the possible options, which are things like walk into the enemy jungle and steal their camps, gank mid, take Rift Herald, or gank top. Based off of what information you do have, as well as the current state of your lanes, you need to make the best call within seconds. 
You always want to take the most rewarding play that's possible, and in most cases, the most rewarding play follows this order. Successfully ganking a lane, taking a neutral objective, counter jungling, and deep warding. Ganking a lane, however, usually is going to lead to successfully taking a neutral objective that's nearby, which is why we think it's usually the most rewarding. But then again, you have to go for the best play that's possible given your circumstances. If you are nearby and able to help when an enemy jungler ganks one of your lanes, you have to instead decide whether you'll win that fight or not. If you can, then obviously come and help your laner. If you can't, you need to alert your teammate and make the best move that's possible, which could be continuing to farm, recalling, or pathing to gank another lane. Counter jungling is a two-way street. Not only do you have to actively counter jungle to punish your opponent, but you also need to consider what they're taking in compensation. Jungling is all about efficiency, so you want to make a mental note when you think your opponent has counter jungled you. Walking into an empty jungle is already disappointing enough, but knowing that you wasted your time walking there also throws some extra salt into the wound. Instead, if you know that you've been counter jungled, walk somewhere else, or at least don't waste your time checking camps that you know are gone. All right, that was a lot of information, so let's recap. Jungle tracking is one of the most important aspects of the game. Junglers have a lot of influence over the game, so you'll need to be able to pinpoint their position whenever possible. The ways that you can go about this is through wards, as well as using deduction skills in order to infer their location. Then, once you have this information, you need to constantly reassess your decisions and continue to adjust them based on what you think the jungler's next move is going to be. Whether you're a laner or a jungler, it doesn't really matter, as there are plenty of decisions you have to make which we covered in the video. That concludes this video, thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to see more content like this or a ton of helpful content related to gameplay, check out our YouTube channel as well as ProGuides.com where we've teamed up with professional players to design the best content to help you improve. Good luck on the Rift! And and we hope to see you all next time.